Welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. Today we're going to be talking radios. In this video we're going to cover FRS radios, GMRS radios, GMRS base stations, the need for a ham radio, and even making your own personal GMRS repeater. So let's get into it. Let's start with FRS radios. This isn't technically a true FRS radio, but it fits a lot of the characteristics of one. Um, the only thing is these operate on just a little bit extra power, so they call them GMRS. But typically what you're going to see with a uh, FRS radio is you're going to have an antenna that you cannot remove. It's going to be stuck like that, and that's what really limits the FRS radios is we, we can't ever change the antenna on these. But they're cheap, they're license free. You don't need a license to actually operate these. Um, these are gonna operate at about two watts on the maximum. And we'll throw a channel chart up, up on the screen here. And we'll kind of show you all the, the power requirements and how much power each radio can actually use. Um, but this is FRS, this is typically what you're gonna see in the store. Um, the range on these is probably only about a half a mile to about two, maybe three miles on a really good day in good conditions. Um, they're just low power and the antenna really kills them and you can't unscrew it like a GMRS radio where we can upgrade our antennas and stuff. But one thing I wanted to show, and this is a question a lot of people I see on, on radio forms and stuff, is all of these connect like your FRS, your GMRS, your big base stations, your ham radios, if you type in the frequencies of FRS into them, all of the radios can talk to each other with no problem whatsoever. And again, we can put the chart back up. All of the frequencies between GMRS and FRS are the same. The, the frequencies for GMR and FRS are actually identical. It's just the power levels are different on the, the frequencies and what they can use. One thing I want to show about the FRS radios and sort of the weird channels they have, they are the same privacy tones and channels as GMRS. So on this radio, it's 91.5 for your CTCS tone here, and they will connect. This is on channel 17, and I have a privacy tone set. And this is on channel 17, and I have 09 on this one, which is the same privacy tone as that. And if you look, they will communicate with each other. They're really close, but yeah, they are the same. All right, so GMRS. This is my favorite for preppers for a couple of reasons. Um, it's $35 for your license. You can basically get your license overnight. And we can operate between 5 watts on your handhelds the whole way to 50 watts on a base station. So basically for 35 bucks, no test or anything like a ham license, we can operate up to 50 watts. So we can go pretty far on a GMRS, ra on a GMRS radio. Um, with 5 watts on your handhelds, I would say you're going to get anywhere between one mile in like really deep city or typically if you're in a rural or semi-urban environment, you're going to go two to six miles. I've talked 10 miles on one of these in ideal conditions and they work just fine. Another thing I really like about GMRS as opposed to a lot of people that end up getting like the ham UV5Rs is these come pre-programmed channels 1 to 20 already in them. So when we turn this on, all of our channels are already programmed in here. Unlike when I purchase a ham radio, I have to type in in channel mode. I have to type in in channel mode all of the frequencies individually with their power levels the band that I want, and the squelch for each channel. It's kind of just a pain. And if you're handing a radio off to somebody, this can get really complicated. And somebody that doesn't know a lot about radio can end up on low power, not understanding how to change it or something. So it's it, it GMRS is just a lot more simple to use. It's really easy to hand one of these radios off to somebody and have them use them correctly and be able to communicate with you. I'm going to reiterate this one more time. All of the GMRS and FRS 
integrate with each other. All the channels and privacy tones can all integrate together. So let's get into your mid power base stations. So this is like your 15 or 20 watt base station. This is a Midland um, 15 watt base station. Um, the only reason I don't like this one as much as some of the BTEC stuff is it uses all the channels and privacy tones of the smaller Midland radios. And it just makes it a little bit more complicated to um, hit up your privacy tones. And we actually have a video of how to match Midland privacy tones to your BTEC products and like basically everything else. So if you want to see that, I'll link it up here. So these are the mid power uh, GMRS base stations or micro mobile, whatever you're going to call them. Um, these are cool because of the power requirements they use is really, really neat. It just runs off DC power. And if we run over here, I just have it in a Jackery off a of 12 volt. So if you need to plug this into your car, you can just plug it into the cigarette outlet in your car because it doesn't draw so much power you need an AC plug or a standalone battery just to run it. Um, this is also a really big plus for preppers because a lot of us have these little jackery stations or whatever solar generators you have. Um, running DC power is a lot more efficient. I don't need to kick on the AC inverter to run these and they have pretty good range. Um, the range you're probably going to see on these mid power like your 15 or your 20, 25 watt uh, micro mobile uh, base stations for GMRS I would say is between 5 and 15 miles. Um, again if you get some any of these up on something real tall like a six, 700 foot mountain hill whatever you can go for 30 or 40 miles, um, especially if 20 with 20 watts, you're going to go really far. But typically speaking, that's what you're going to see with your mid-power um, base stations. These are going to be double or triple the power of your handheld. So these are really for SHTF. We're going to keep our handhelds on us. Um, they're going to be in a rig or on a vest or just clip to a backpack or something. These are really nice to set up stations or you need more power. If I could set this in a neutral location and use it, and other people can use it to communicate around town. So let's move up to your 50 watt station and why you might want one of these. Um, I like having a big 50 watt base station at my house um, because during a bad event or whatever, if someone is home and they need to call out to everybody and everyone's wearing their handhelds and stuff, somebody could put this on all 50 watts and reach out to everyone very, very far away, no matter what, and get to them. And they could get back and maybe if they needed help. So th this is a big consideration um, to having one of these. Um, these require a lot of power and you're going to have to take that into consideration when you're buying a 50 watt radio. So I am running this off the Jackery right now, but this is a Jackery 300. This draws too much power on 50 watts. So I actually shut the station down. I just can't put my other bigger stations out here. I just have it out here just, just for show. But if I needed to operate this, I need at least a 500 watt power station. Uh, this actually draws amps. Um, so it's something to consider. And these do not hook right up to your DC power. I have this hooked up to a Duracom LPX14, and we'll link all this stuff in the description. But you either can hook this up to one of those ham radio batteries, or if you're like me and you're already kind of a prepper and you kind of already have some stations, we hook them up to our solar generators, and I just run the AC outlet. So this isn't something you'd probably run 24 seven, but when you need the power, you have it. Okay, so if you're anything like me, there's no repeaters in your area. So I built my own. Um, this is a BTEC GMRS Pro. And if you go into the app on your phone with this, and I put a piece of tape on this to know that I leave it in relay mode. Um, I'll show a screenshot of where to do that. I'll roll that right here. Um, but we put this on audio relay mode, and we hook it up to a BTEC 25-watt amp. I'll put the model above, um, but it's a 25-watt amp, 
Um, and we hooked this up to an external antenna and a power supply. And you can take your just regular old GMRS and, uh, radios and we can relay everything back to us. Testing, testing. And it's going to kick everything back to me with 25 watts. Um, this can be done just by putting the BTEC GMRS Pro in audio relay mode and just using it with a regular antenna. But I wanted something with a lot more power. And this can be set at a neutral location or someone's house in the middle of town. And you can have a 25 watt audio relay or repeater, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can extend your GMRS range yourself. And it's your own personal repeater that you run, so you can set the privacy tones and everything on the radios for yourself. Okay, so this is like your FRS radio with the standard antenna or whatever. But if you have something like this, it turns this little 2-watt radio that you could probably use inside your house or if you're close to this into an audio relay. And to prove the privacy tones and everything match up, we're just going to hit it really quick. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And it just kicks it back to us. And that's just basically an FRS radio that I'm using to tie into a GMRS radio that's boosted out by a GMRS amp at 25 watts. Okay, last thing on this is um, we are going to show you how to do an affordable way to integrate your comms, uh, your radios, with your headsets. So as long as you have an audio jack on your headset, whether they're the Pelotors or these are really common, the walkers, razors, you can run a wire up to these and hear your radio through your hearing protection. So let's come up here and let's show you how this works. So these are the two headsets we have. Sorry, I'm all tangled up. Um, all we need is an audio jack. That one's got an audio jack and the walkers have one too. It's over here. Um, um, this comes with two different connections. Um, this is your standard like Baofeng, uh, BTEC connection. It's got two prongs. One's fatter than the other. Uh, everyone's seen these. They're pretty standard connections for these radios. We're going to push that in. And this goes along with your rig. I'm not going to totally rig it up here, but I'm just going to show you how it works. Um, this has got a clip on it, so you can clip it to your, uh, your vest. And it's got a push to talk. is right here on the side. And it's got the audio plug right there. So we got it into the radio. Let's just hook it into one of the ear sets. I prefer these Pelotor Tactical 300s over the Walker Razors because they give you directional hearing and we can run comms. As well. So we got the radio hooked up and we have the comm cable running to our push to talk and we have a cable you know, running to the radio. So everything is hooked up. So let's kick our earplugs on, or ear headset. So those are kicked on, and then you're going to hear all the sound from the radio is going to come through these now. Oh, here we go. Oh, so a little bit fuzzy, but the cool thing is when you have this hooked into your rig now, um, you have your push to talk right on you, and you have hearing protection, and you have your directional hearing again. So the radio is not actually going to display any or have any audio coming out of it, even if I hit this. It's it's all in my ears. So and my push to talk, you know, if I had this on, it would be right next to me, and I could talk just like that. So really cool system. Um, this is kind of an extra. This cable is from Tigrit Outdoors, and the cables seem to work pretty good. I've tested a couple of them. I've had them out and. We've, I've messed with them enough that they, they seem reliable enough. Um, it is not, you know, $1,500 set up with, you know, Peltor, Comtax, or anything. This is a good, cheap way to do it uh, if you're just a prepper and you're on a budget and you just want to have a way to integrate your comms. So that's a lot of the radios um, that we would be using during SHTF. Um, the micro mobile base stations, your 50 watt base station, a lot of the handheld GMRS radios. Final consideration uh, to make is just if you're not a ham operator, 
uh, even if you're not a ham operator. Uh, just having a handheld ham radio is good um, because I can uh, go to radioreference.com and I can print out a lot of the emergency uh, frequencies um, in my town or local area and I can type them in and listen to them on a ham radio. On a GMRS you really can't do that um, even though I advocate for having a GMRS radio and that, that's sort of the system that I stick with and use but, but we do have ham radios uh, we do use them for that and <laughs> I know the ham guys are going to kill me for saying this. If you type GMRS frequencies into this and transmit on them, there really isn't a way for anyone to know the difference. You're not really breaking the law. You're technically transmitting on a non-GMRS radio. But if you stay on the frequencies and stay within the watt limits, I think you'll be just fine. Don't follow my advice. Don't listen to me at all. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, but that's it for radio. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out, and we'll see you in the next one.